Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey brother! Guys, I don't know about you, but one of the very first things I remember thinking when I first discovered Legend of Korra was, wow, Korra looks a lot like Katara, which is like totally fine. It doesn't really affect the story or anything, but it was just a little disappointing in a man, all the other avatars have such crazy distinct appearances kind of way. I mean, look at Kiyoshi, she's got the face paint, the unique weapons, the battle armor, the headdress, like, whoa. And then you've got Korra, who's just kind of a more muscular looking Katara. And again, there's nothing wrong with the characters looking similar, but just like, did the female lead character of Korra need to look so much like the female lead character of Last Airbender? And yes, I know Katara was from the Water Tribe and the next Avatar was always gonna be from the Water Tribe as well. So some resemblance was unavoidable. Like, I mean, the whole nation just wears blue all the time anyway. But it's not just that. It's not just that both girls are from the Southern Water Tribe. I mean, they have the same eye color, the same eye shape. And like Katara has her hair loopies and Korra has her hair uh, droopies. Honestly though, the fact that they happen to be from the same place is frankly irrelevant to this theory. The point of which is going to be that no matter where Korra was from, she was destined to look like Katara. Here's the thing. I think the reason we ended up with a main character who looks so much like Aang's girlfriend is literally because Katara was Aang's girlfriend. And today, we get to the bottom. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. Is there anything you've ever wanted to do, but for whatever reason, just keep putting off for no particular reason? Well, if that thing is getting straighter teeth and a better smile, let me direct you to Candid. Thanks to Candid, straightening your teeth is simpler, comfier, and easier than ever. Meaning you too could have that patented Ang smile in no time flat. With Candid, your aligners are comfortable, removable, and best of all, practically invisible. So, unlike wire braces, which I had to suffer through in high school, you can transform your smile without anybody noticing. By high school, I mean from 7th grade to 11th grade, so like most of middle school too. And with Candid, your treatment includes remote monitoring from the same orthodontist who originally created your aligners, so you never have to wonder if you're doing everything right or if things are going okay. You'll always know, and I love that. And treatment happens quick, usually within just 6 months of time, but you'll start seeing results way before then, and all at thousands thousands less than regular braces. So start straightening your teeth today. Right now, our viewers can get $75 off Candid Starter Kit by going to candidco.com slash SCB and then using promo code SCB. Again, that is candidco.com slash SCB with promo code SCB. Take advantage of this limited time offer to get $75 off your starter kit. Again, candidco.com slash SCB, promo code SCB. Link is in the description down below. Okay guys, I don't think there is any other fandom out there that gets me stuck scrolling on Instagram more than Avatar, which is where I first came across this idea. Because some very keen eagle-eyed fans have noticed a very adorable trend within the world of Avatar, which is that the current Avatar almost always looks very similar to the past Avatar's significant other. Now, we've already noted these similarities between Katara and Korra, but sure enough, if you keep keep traveling back, the trend continues. For example, although she's not in the show very much, we do get a good look at Roku's wife, who, despite being from the Fire Nation, bears an uncanny resemblance to Aang with her notably round face and hazel eyes. Moving back even further, we've been recently introduced into Avatar Kyoshi's love interest, a Fire Nation girl named Rangi. Naturally, since she's from the novels, we don't have a lot of pictures of her to go by, but her appearance on the cover art does look very similar to a young Roku. And can I just pause here to say that clearly the Avatar has a huge weakness for Fire Nation girls. I mean, even Korra ends up with Asami. And yes, I know Katara was from the Water Tribe, but we all remember how Aang reacted to seeing her in her Fire Nation getup for the first time. But anyway, the trend doesn't stop there. We don't get to see a lot of images of Kyoshi without her face paint and full regalia, but they are out there. And when you find them, you will notice that she does look a lot like Korok's fiance, 
Umi, which by the way, while we're here, we also have another theory that Umi goes on to become the Painted Lady. And like, not for nothing, but the Painted Lady, as her name suggests, paints her face, and so does Kiyoshi. And doesn't just paint her face, has actual matching eye makeup. And also, also, actually, actually, in the novels, Rangi paints her face as well, but she doesn't do the eye, she does the chin thing, just like the Painted Lady. So I'm just, I'm just, it's there, it's there. Either way though, that is about as far back thus far as we can track this trend as to this point, we don't know of Yang Chen's significant other, if there was one at all, and we don't know who will succeed Korra. Regardless though, once this pattern was noticed, the meme spread through the fandom like wildfire, usually accompanied by some quote similar to the following. You know how in Japanese folklore there's the saying about how in your next life you'll look like the person you loved the most in your current life? And when you read that and then look at the pictures, you're like, oh my god, that is so adorable, I cannot believe they included that and that nobody noticed it till now and just uh -huh. it just warms the heart and personally I could not wait to like dive in and figure out what the exact folklore was so I could make this exact video and regale you with all the adorableness of it but alas I have some bad news for you followed by some great news but first the bad news the bad news is this no such folklore actually exists in Japanese culture. Nor, as far as I could tell, is this idea part of the idea of reincarnation in general. And let me just also say that by no means am I an expert in reincarnation, so it's possible this exists and I just didn't find it. But as far as I could tell, there was nothing that suggested that who you loved in this life determined what you looked like in your next life. But when I found that out, I was like, ah, oh, what a bummer. Someone just made up what this trend was based on? That's annoying, but I guess like, no harm, no foul. The observation's still good either way, right? But actually, um, Yes, some harm, some foul. I mean, it's certainly not uncommon for stuff like this to happen in movies or popular stories where some misquote or bit of misinformation spreads around in the fandom until it actually overtakes the real quote. It's like how everyone always says, Luke, I am your father, when actually the quote is, No, I am your father. Although let me just say, if in the future this is my son Luke watching, I, I am your father. You probably didn't mean me to tell you this. Or how did you know that the word Ewok isn't ever actually said in Return of the Jedi and yet you all happen to know what these little bear guys are called? Did you know when you say the quote, Houston, we have a problem, you were actually quoting the movie Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. Which is misquoting the actual transmission log which says, okay, Houston, we've had a problem. Which to me is hilarious because it's like the most famous one-liner people know from NASA. Except that is the other super misquoted one-liner from NASA, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Which of course, everyone loves to point out how man and mankind are actually synonyms, which makes this very meaningful quote basically redundant and kind of meaningless. But, but the story goes deeper because then Neil Armstrong himself said that he actually said one small step for a man, but the transmission just didn't pick up the word a and that changed the whole thing and it was a really bad time for it to miss something. Which like, come on NASA, how hard is it to talk to somebody on the moon? I mean, last I checked, Sokka was basically dating her before she died to revive a fish. But look at that, we've come full circle. Uh, kind of. The point is, stuff like this normally isn't very harmful, it just sort of fades into our vernacular. But this meme is a little different because it actually involves rewriting another culture's folklore and history, which can lead to a lot of misconceptions or incorrect beliefs about how other places operate and the kind of things they believe in, which ultimately could end up affecting how you treat someone in person based on those incorrect beliefs. Anyway, I know this is just an adorable little meme, but it's just fascinating to me the speed at which this sort of stuff can spread sometimes. I guess what I'm saying is meme responsibly. The great news is though that even though the sourced folklore doesn't exist to explain this phenomenon in the world of Avatar, that doesn't mean there isn't 
another explanation. I mean, this pattern is so obvious and established five avatars over that it cannot just be total coincidence, right? So today we wanted to offer a more in-universe explanation for why this might be happening, why each avatar happens to resemble the significant other of the past avatar. So as ever, when looking into what ties each avatar from one life to the next, you almost always have to start with Ra. Rava. Rava, in case you don't know or you haven't watched Korra, is the literal spirit of light and peace in the world who permanently fused with the first avatar, Wan. She is the reason the avatar can use all four elements and enter the avatar state. And being a spirit herself, she is also the reason the avatar can act as the literal bridge between the human and spirit world. And every time the avatar dies, she is reborn into the next avatar, carrying with her an imprint of every avatar she has has been a part of until that point. So it almost might make sense for the next avatar to just continue to resemble their last self, but obviously that's not the case. So what's going on? Clearly it has more to do with someone the avatar loved. And personally, I think this is a representation of how Juan first merged with Rava. At one point, the two existed as separate beings altogether. And honestly, Rava was kind of distrustful of Juan and all humans, thinking that they were not very courageous and not capable of thinking of others beyond themselves. Over time though, she saw that she had misjudged Juan and began to reconsider this position and of course, eventually merged permanently with him and all of his future lives. And going forward, I think whoever the avatar loves the most continues to act as this validating factor for Rava, proving over and over that humans, even the very most powerful of them, are capable of love and putting others before themselves. Of course, Rava herself has already merged with the avatar, making them part spirit. But then in a less literal way, she must also bond with whoever the avatar loves the most. And that person would represent what Juan did in the very first pairing, just pure humanity. And it's Rava's bonding with that person that produces their likeness in the next avatar. Because she is bonded with that person in the same way that she initially bonded with Juan. You've got one person who's part spirit, one person who's all human, and when you bring them together, they make the next avatar. I mean, not literally create the next one, just like the likeness of the next one. Also, for what it's worth, I don't think this has to be romantic love. It can just be love in general. So it could be familial love or like a best friend or something in the case that the avatar didn't uh, romantically end up with someone. But there you go. That is our in-universe explanation for this very, very adorable pattern in the world of Avatar. Guys, our question for you and everyone else is, what is your favorite misquoted thing? Let me know in the towel section down below. There are a ton of these. For example, uh, what do you think Humpty Dumpty looks like? Are you thinking of an egg? Why? Guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Avatar action from us. If you want to see why lightning bending suddenly became so common in Korra, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother. They never said he was an egg.